In the aftermath of the Second World War, many areas of Britain struggled to deal with inner city slums and poverty. This was certainly the case in Glasgow, which had some of the worst slums in Europe. So imagine the mood when Glasgow City Council agreed to spend the equivalent of £200,000 in today's money on a painting for their Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum. And this is the painting, Christ of St John of the Cross, by the Spanish surrealist artist Salvador Dali. With his trademark moustache, the artist was as famous for his strange dreamlike artworks as he was for his eccentric behaviour. His painting of Christ floating on a crucifix would become one of the most controversial art investments in Glasgow's history. Many local art school students protested the purchase back in 1952, and Alistair Auld was one of them. Why did you feel there was a need to protest? Well, it was a huge sum of money. That kind of money was felt by many people to be, should have been spent on new houses. But as art students, of course, we were much more <laughs> concerned with the, the painting. And, and instead of buying Scottish painting, we were going and buying an outlandish uh, Spanish painting. Not everyone agreed with Alistair. Thomas Honeyman, here on the left with Dali, was the director of Kelvin Grove Art Gallery in the 50s. When he saw visitors captivated by Dali's Christ in a London gallery, he immediately wanted it for his museum. He obviously uh, thought that this would be a good thing for Glasgow uh, to get people to come to the gallery and also it would be a money spinner in the, in the long run. He was shrewd enough, I think, to realise that it, it was a, a pretty good bet. In June 1952, the painting was installed. Honeyman's plan worked. Within two months, 50,000 people had paid a shilling to see it and generated almost half the purchase price. Glasgow Museum's curator, Pippa Stevenson, has spent years studying the painting. I've never seen a crucifix painted like this. Before Dali, it hadn't been painted like this. Dali said instead of gory, bloody details, he wanted to paint a Christ that was as beautiful as God. People saw it as more of a Hollywood image rather than um, a deeply religious one. And so he used the model, presumably, to portray Christ, yeah? He did. Russell Saunders was a, a stunt double. He strung Russell up for 20 minutes at a time on a crucifix in his studio. It's almost like you're looking up and looking down at the figure. He drew the image as a triangle, and once he had those proportions, he believed that he could create uh, the, just the right proportions for his, for his Christ. Dali's painting had been on display nine years when it was back in the headlines again. And once more, Alistair was associated with it. Well, I joined the staff here in the gallery in, in 1956. And little did I know that uh, I'd be looking after the very painting that I uh, protested about. I wouldn't say it necessarily changed one's views uh, about the painting uh, until perhaps the day that it was attacked, which uh, was so extraordinary. This young man came and sat down on a bench. Uh, he said, I don't like this painting, and went up and uh, started to attack it with a piece of sandstone. Conservationists repaired the damage successfully and the attack only served to make the painting even more of an attraction. Honeyman considered the painting to be his greatest acquisition and so he should because as director he'd had the incredible foresight to include copyright control in the purchase price which was an unusual move in those days. Which means the gallery can reproduce the painting without paying any fees to Dali's estate. Dali's paintings fetch tens of millions of pounds at auction, but that's irrelevant, as Glasgow isn't selling this one any time soon. I think it's quite, uh, quite special, yes. I like it. It was the bargain of the century that Glasgow got. Great draw, worth every penny. 